Ghana has officially become the first African country to distribute COVID-19 vaccines via a drone. The nationwide program called Zipline kicked off its delivery campaign of the vaccines this week. The Ghanaian government says this is the first shipment of the AstraZeneca vaccine through COVAX in partnership with the World Health Organization. Drone delivery of COVID-19 vaccines will ensure the rapid and equitable access of the vaccine across Ghana, especially in rural areas. Now we'll be expanding this conversation with our guests as we also remember that on the 6th of March in 1957, the Gold Coast, now known as Ghana, gained its independence from Britain. And today, the Republic of Ghana commemorates 64 years of independence, ranked as the most stable political environment within the West Africa sub-region. Ghana's democracy came under the spotlight this week when the country's Supreme Court unanimously dismissed opposition leader and former President John Mahama's petition against the results of the 2020 presidential polls. Now to speak to us more about this, we're joined by academic and founder of the Unpacking Africa podcast, Emmanuel Gamal. Emmanuel, very good morning to you. Thank you so much for your time. We'll wake up to some exciting news uh, upon learning that an African country, Ghana, has officially become the first to distribute COVID-19 vaccines in a drone, um, the first in the continent. What are your reactions to this and what do you make of the manner in which Ghana has handled COVID-19? Thank you so much, Paul. Um, good morning to you and to your listeners. And yes, we're, we're incredibly excited about our Independence Day. And yes, there has been a good rollout and distribution, effective uh, distribution of vaccinations um, around, in, around COVID-19. There are family members of mine who have been in, in line and prioritized, similar to other country regimes. It's been healthcare workers and the elderly, as well as uh, a few of the demographics, um, critical workers that have been prioritized to receive these. Um, I think you mentioned earlier Zipline, uh, is a company that's been set up in Ghana and has had success and helping distribute medical supplies, particularly to hard to reach areas in a rural area. So um, there's been an initial jubilation and success of first the delivery, um, over 300,000 uh, vaccinations, vaccines that have arrived and also um, of, of the distribution of the vaccinations with some, some of my more elderly family uh, members having received it. That's correct. What would you say has been the general sentiment when it comes to Ghana's reaction, Ghanaians' reaction to COVID-19 and observing those protocols, ensuring that those non-pharmaceutical interventions are indeed taking place, even way before um, this move of the vaccinations and the manner in which the va vaccinations are being delivered? So definitely it's been... Um, leadership from the top having uh, President Anako Fado give consistent updates, but also Ghana having its own uh, set of tools in order to deal with it. If you recall, we were one of the first countries to remove the stringent lockdown because we never had um, as, as high a fatality rate as other countries. So it's been a mix of being sensitive to the local context, but, but still keeping a keen eye and watch. Um, on, on the pandemic, keeping a key eye on watch on the various strains um, of the virus. And President Alcofado was, was given a second mandate during the December elections again, which indicates confidence in his leadership during uh, a tumultuous, difficult year due to lockdown and the pandemic as well. Um, I think most Ghanaians have come to appreciate the fact that he also was one of the first people to take the vaccines himself, similar to other presidents. Um, but that was quite important in order to debunk any conspiracies amongst the, the efficacy or, quote-unquote, the perceived um, uh, dangers around vaccination. Uh, I think that what has been incredibly difficult and in having uh, our finance minister speak about it is um, kind of economic stimulus and what are the economic options that, due to the health pandemic and global lockdown, countries have been able to utilize. Um, and, and with Ghana having... Uh, presented cocoa with Ivory Coast in the global market in order to try and add value um, to our chocolate has been incredibly challenging um, for a lot of SMEs, for a lot of business sectors, and particularly, if you would also recall, the year of return and beyond the return campaign has been incredibly difficult for our tourism sector. Um, but all in all, Guineans are incredibly uh, resilient. Uh, we've had leadership that's tried to be very responsive and create our own 
slew of solutions towards the COVID-19 um, response and pandemic. We've had frequent response from top leadership explaining um, what level of restrictions and what interventions um, have, have been available to us and having uh, access to vaccines, particularly for our critical health um, care workers and also uh, and private sector stepping up, um, creating uh, COVID centers. And, and they've been really uh, multi-sector supports in trying to tackle what has been a, a global pandemic that we're all trying to live through. So it's been decently positive um, and where there have been a few hiccups uh, and mistakes, um, leadership has shown through. As, as you speak, um, you know, very lastly, before we move on to the other aspect of the political atmosphere in Ghana, what would you say has been the sentiment when it comes to Ghanaians receiving the vaccination? We know here in South Africa there's been a, a lot of reluctance. A lot of, some people at the very beginning were speaking about how they don't know much about the vaccines and they're really reluctant to just uh, go, go ahead and, and receive it. I think the general sentiment has been um, one of tempered optimism. I think, of course, with most most things, uh, not everyone is, is as trustworthy about the vaccines and others. But I think most, by and large, Kenyans are, are feeling grateful that we have the first batch. We don't take that lightly. Um, most of us are also compliant because the realization is that um, there have been quite a few people who have lost um, their lives and our family. We all have anecdotes, both locally um, and across the West African region and, and some abroad, who've been affected by COVID-19. And so there's almost a, a reality of we are in this together and whatever means that we can we can try to address this. Um, that being said, I think with, with any medical intervention, with any novel challenge, there are a few skeptics out there, but we've not seen um, a large spread conspiracy or skepticism. Uh, and then for me, having an elderly family member and, and family members who are critical, critical workers in the health profession um, also take the vaccines hits home, right? So mm. those are anecdotal um, indicators that we're responding positively as best we can to the situation. Very well. I'd like for us to continue our conversation shortly after this and ask that you stay on the line for us. Emmanuel Gamel, Unpacking Africa podcast host, speaking to us about the manner in which Ghana has now officially become the first African country to distribute COVID-19 vaccines via drones and the impact of COVID-19 in that country. Still to come, we will be speaking about the political dynamics within the country and also just reflecting on the Republic of Ghana, which commemorates 64 years since it regained its independence. That conversation and more still to come shortly after this. Hi, Emmanuel. Hello. Okay, so we're going to come to you now. We'll talk about the uh, elections and then we'll talk about independence. Okay. Okay, thank you, thank you. Let's now remind you of some of the stories we're tracking at this half hour. A hundred thousand healthcare workers have now been vaccinated so far, with the health department aiming to vaccinate all frontline workers by the end of March. Controversial prosecution's boss Muiboni Nogu steps down days after being informed of another inquiry into her fitness to hold office. Inquiry would have investigated Nogu's decision to drop fraud and corruption charges 
against Durban businessman Toshan Pandey when she was head of the NPA in KwaZulu Natal. A stern warning from the World Health Organization. The Global Health Organization says the administering of vaccines does not mean the pandemic has come to an end. And in your sport this hour, TS Galaxy put a dent in Supersport United's title hopes when they held Matatanza to a goalless draw at the Lucas Masterpieces Madipa Stadium. Thanks for staying with us as we continue our discussion on Ghana on the 6th of March in 1957. The Gold Coast, now known as Ghana, gained its independence from Britain. And today, the Republic of Ghana commemorates 64 years of independence, ranked as the most stable political environment within the West African sub-region. We are expanding and still in conversation with our guest, Unpacking Africa podcast host, Emmanuel Gamel, who's been on the line um, in this conversation. Emmanuel, as you were speaking about the manner in which COVID-19 has been dealt with in Ghana and the sort of action, uh, reaction from Ghanaians when it comes to the COVID-19 vaccine, you spoke a lot about uh, President, uh, um, uh, President Akufo, uh, Nana Akufo Ado and his leadership, but we know that there has also been other elements to, to his leadership in terms of um, his, his election and the manner in which that uh, he was, uh, well, there was um, aspects that he was going to be overthrown, and that has not necessarily happened. Sure, um, I can speak a bit, and as any functioning democracy, we have elections, and uh, last year we had our December elections, both presidential and parliamentary, in order to uh, vet, approve, and have the next wave of um, democratically elected leaders. Our election was incredibly peaceful. Um, especially during a time when elections that were happening in the global north and other places were not deemed so. Um, and within the rights of the opposition, um, uh, the former president, John Mahama, who um, also during his tenure when he was elected um, uh, four years ago, um, uh, President Anako Fuado challenged the, the results and some validity of votes. Um, after the December 7th election, uh, the petition was submitted to the Supreme Court, and two days ago, um, there was a, a hearing, a unanimous dismissal of um, the opposition leader led by former President John Mahama's opposition party, um, saying that there was not enough evidence in terms of invalid votes in order to denounce the results of the December 7th election. So I think one thing that happened out of the election was that for the first time in a while in our um, we had a majority of uh, our parliament being one party and the presidential um, elections being another party, showing that there's growth in the robustness of our democratic process, showing that there's a need for compromise. And even if people were dissatisfied with um, some of the policies and some of the challenges um, that happened over the last four years, there, were, you know, the, there was no evidence that was presented to the Electoral Commission during the Supreme Court's uh, um, very publicized um, uh, presentation uh, on any um, reason for for the majority vote and for us it's 50 plus one um, that they did not go to current president Anako Fado. So the Supreme Court confirmed what the electorate and the electoral commission had announced on December 7th um, and the petition has been duly dismissed. We also know that on this day in 1957, Ghana gained its independence from Britain, a very uh, you know, important uh, page of the history books in Ghana. How exactly will this day be recorded and commemorated as it's uh, now 64 years since uh, uh, Ghana regained its independence? No, absolutely. I think it's incredibly important for us to document, commemorate, reflect on the journey we've taken from Gold Coast to Ghana. Um, it's also incredibly important to, to see um, what spaces and what future casting we have to do in determining what it means to be Ghanaian, our place, um, both locally, regionally, Pan-African, and globally. It's also important to note the things that we've been able to get right. Some of it has been peaceful transition to democratic elections, as we just mentioned shortly. Some of it has also been um, things that have been global and and celebrating the connection between Africa and its diaspora and the 400 years in which 
uh, the first slaves and, the, and our first relatives left the coast. Um, some of it has also not been um, as promising because, as we know, we have a strong Pan-African history, um, and we've had challenges in, in galvanizing as much of the continent as, as possible and becoming um, an economic community. But we've made some strides, and notably on uh, being able to get the African Continental Free Trade Agreement um, ratified and uh, this year, 2021, um, being operational, especially with uh, strong ties and allies um, in South Africa with President Cyril Ramaphosa and Juan um, um at the helm of affairs in the Secretariat that is based in Ghana. Uh, I think the pandemic has made all of us a bit reflective. Typically, there are state functions. There's an opportunity for us to display right from um, uh, students and, and children to professionals um, to engage in a, in a national celebration of uh, articulating our Ghana um, and, and articulating our, our shift from being a British colony to an independent state that is chartering its course, as we found out, um, all countries are doing so, and, and, and with the challenges and benefits therein. Um, I think it's also important for us to note that um, I think some of these, the, the landmark opportunities um, for us to remind ourselves the commitment to having black-led um, and Africa uh, excellent leadership is important. So for, the, for our kids, for those who um, are Ghanaian or love Ghana or are friends of Ghana, mm -hmm. to note that this is a project that we've started um, that in comparison to a lot of developing countries, um, we've taken our strides with our challenges and we're looking uh, to establish an even more equitable future that empowers more Africans, more black people, and more Ghanaians as well. So it's definitely yeah. um, reflective, but um, within the pandemic and COVID-19, um, it's tempered. Thank you so much uh, for your time and uh, sharing that insight as, of course, uh, we round up that conversation.